From San Diego, California, this is a One Extraordinary Marriage Show. Where being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex has taken the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call or text us on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663 or send us an email to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. In today's show, we're talking about the mindset around what you choose to upgrade and how that mindset impacts your marriage. And Eric Thomas had this to say about upgrades. He said, you've upgraded your technology, but you have not upgraded yourself. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Ouch. That's what we're talking about today. But first, we start each One Extraordinary Marriage show with a hug. And for those of you that are brand new, and maybe you've never heard us talk about hugs before, first of all, welcome. Yes. We're so excited to have you. And, and just so you know, a hug is an opportunity for you to hear from someone else in the one family whose marriage has experienced breakthrough or transformation. And this hug comes from an email message we received that said, I have been listening to your show for about three years now, since before I was married to my wow. husband. Okay. Yay, we love finding out about people who started listening before they got married. Yes. We've been married for about two years, but I've always struggled in the intimacy department because of my chronic illness. Mm. When I started listening to your show, I started to kick my butt into gear and it's been better. But as many listeners who struggle with multiple unpredictable conditions as I do, it's still a struggle. We just answered our 19 questions. So, and she's referencing there the 19 questions to amazing sex with your spouse. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are like, yeah, I want that. Go to one extraordinary marriage.com slash 19 questions. And you can get it as well because she says, so we can start now and the new year off right with our own intimacy lifestyle. So amazing. My husband is always so patient and right there with me, but to attest to what you were speaking about in the podcast about the doubts we faced, I wrote our own marriage vows so that he could have one less chance to get out. Whoa. Wow. Thank the good Lord he didn't. No matter how much more the doctors tell us, I'm only 25. He just helps me roll with it and reminds me of the positives when I shoot all the negative at him. Thank you so much for addressing this huge topic in your podcast. Some 40% of Americans are affected by a chronic health condition, but I'm so glad that no one in your family currently does. That is such a blessing. Mm. Y'all have a Merry Christmas and we hope to see you in Dallas. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Breakthrough. Look at that. Here's a couple in their early 20s and they're taking action in spite of chronic illness. They're creating their own intimacy lifestyle. They're, as we're talking about in the show, they're upgrading their marriage even before the new year starts. Like, which is great. It's absolutely it's where great. You got to be. And you know, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, any point in time, but especially around the holidays, we're bombarded with all of these ads talking about the newest features on our phones or, you know, like you need this button and you need this service and you need all of this or, or don't be still driving last year's car model. You need to upgrade your car. You, you know, you shouldn't be using a refrigerator that doesn't have like smartphone capabilities, right? Like you should be able to control your refrigerator and your thermostat and your lights and everything else from your phone because if not, oh my gosh, that's like so last year. Mm -hmm. And we're bombarded with all these messages and we're, we've been conditioned to think that everything in our lives needs to be upgraded, right? And you know, the phones, it's every two years. I mean, our kids start talking about their next phone upgrade the minute they get a new phone, right? Like, <laughs> I think there's like, I know it's, it's weird, but yes, that does happen. And, and you know, we replace our cars and, you know, and I, I found one statistic that said on average, um, Americans replace their cars about every six to eight years. Unless you're leasing and it could be anywhere from every two to three years. Correct. Because that's a whole other option. I didn't mm -hmm. even think about the leasing option. Yeah. But we live in a society that is all about the upgrades. You know, when things don't look as shiny, when it doesn't have all the new features, when we've gotten tired of it and we see something that we like better. We are perpetually encouraged to upgrade all the things in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so... It probably shouldn't come as a shock. It still does, but it probably shouldn't come as a shock that the same mindset is taking root in marriages, right? Like, you know, we hear comments, we get emails saying things like, well, my husband doesn't treat me like he used to, or, or my wife has let herself go, or we just don't have anything in common anymore, or we're just not compatible. So it must be time for an upgrade, right? Because everything else, like when all those other features and bells and whistles stop working, it's time for an upgrade. Yeah. And 
And we're taking that same mindset to the people that we have made this commitment to. And so in case you're wondering if it's time for an upgrade in your, in your spouse, it's not. Like, I'm just going to lay it out there at the start of the show. You don't have to wait, you know, 30 minutes to find out if Elisa's going to say that, if Tony's going to agree with her. No, it's not time for an upgrade in your spouse. Mm -mm. Because when we're looking at all the tech, right, or all of the appliances, the cars or things like that, we're, we're focused on the outward. Right. When we start talking about our relationship, you know, that starts to, that gets in a different place. And when you look at this idea of upgrading your spouse, you first need to look at, are you willing to upgrade your marriage? Because if you're talking about upgrading your spouse, let me tell you something, that's an external fix. You're, you're looking at your external circumstances. But when you start focusing on upgrading your marriage, mm -hmm. all of a sudden we start talking about the internal that's, that's what you can do. That's how you're going to show up in the moment. Those are the things that you can control. So we really need to look at this whole mindset around upgrading. Cause I will tell you, there have definitely been times in this marriage when upgrading has crossed our mind. Oh, for sure. For when, sure. When would you, I, I would love to know, cause I'm putting you on the spot. You didn't know I was going to ask you this question. When have you considered upgrading? When have I considered upgrading? I think it's interesting because you bring this up and that that upgrade mentality comes from an external viewpoint, right? Like seeing you in different stages of our marriage over the 23 years, mm -hmm. right? And going, gosh, like looking a little, and I'm going to be truthful, just looking a little ragged, you, you know? And then I would say those were times prior or not prior, but after kids, maybe when we both had sleep deprivation, um, I think really in a time when, again, cycling was my idol and I know I was at probably one of my fittest ever mm -hmm. and you were doing nothing. Um, so I think a lot of my upgrades came from that external view and vision of who you were when we first started dating and how that changed as we have gotten older. I think you've become more beautiful now. So I, I don't see that anymore. Like mm -hmm. I, I did. There was a time though when I was like, wow, there, there's something else out there. And just so y'all know, nobody needs to send Tony any hate mail about calling me ragged on the show. Like we've had, we've had conversations around this. It doesn't, like it's not resting on me. I'm not taking it's that. truthful though. I mean, I look at pictures and think I look ragged and like, Oh my gosh. I mean, I tell Tony all the time. I'm like, thank goodness I've gotten better with age because you had to put up with a lot, it, but it, but it's truthful folks. And, and we have those, we, we don't want anybody to say that. And yet it's truth. And I, and I'm sure Lisa could say the same thing about me at times in our marriage about that external, right? And, and I'd be like, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm perfect, right? Because we always have that vision of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And yet there are probably times internally and externally where Elisa has probably sat in our marriage and said, I'm done with this. Like th there has to be something better than this. Well, you don't find yourself considering divorce if you aren't thinking about upgrading the situation. And we've been there. And we've been there. We've been there. I remember when, you know, when Alex was two and we had lost Andrew and I was in such a state of grief and so was Tony, but I couldn't recognize his grief. And all I saw was his anger. And I'm like, look, I am not putting up with this angry thing. Like this monster that's living on it. And I would rise up in full mama bear mode and just be like, you back down. Because mm -hmm. the anger is not residing in this, like we're not doing this, and that was, and I was just like, if I'm married to an angry man, like forget it, a and that was a place where we found, our, like I was considering divorce again because I was just like, there has got to be something better out there because I'm not going to tolerate this, and and that's where we really get into this place of, you know, w we get so focused on the external. Right. And, and well, what if I had someone new or what if we were doing something new or what if, you know, I had a guy that did this or what if I had a girl that did this and, and there's all this focus on the external. And then we start getting into these thoughts of, well, well, if I had a different husband, maybe then I'd be happy. Or if I had a different wife, maybe, maybe then there'd be more excitement in our marriage. And, and it kind of sounds like if you've listened to teenagers, um, because we have to, I've got, you know, pulse on this, that they talk a lot of times about, well, when I get this or when I get to this stage in life, 
You know, when I get to high school, it's going to be amazing. And I'm going to be so happy when I get to college. I'm going to be so happy when I get my new car. I'm going to be happy. like we t- people talk like that. And then we do the same thing in our marriages. Well, when when my spouse acts like this or when I find a spouse that acts like this, it's going to make me happy. But the reality is, and I will tell you, if you've never seen a teenager with a phone, the minute they get it, and, and this is not just the kids, this is also the adults, um, they're already thinking about the fact that it's out of date and they need the next new one hmm. because you haven't changed the mindset. You haven't changed your, your internal circumstances. You haven't looked at you and how you're showing up. And I want to just say something, and I, I think we've been around here in America long enough in our ages. I mean, we're, we're in our mid forties, so we've seen a couple of decades go by and I don't remember this when we were kids, right? I mean, there, there definitely came a point where that was happening, but as a kid myself, as a 16 year old, we, we didn't have that. We didn't live in a a society where this was the mentality, right? The generation before actually went through the Great Depression. Well, our parents were the, children of okay, so two, who went ge- two so generations, two generations yeah. before they had gone through the Great Depression, and so those were like our grandparents, mm-hmm. and and they were miserly. I mean, a lot of them, and a lot of them just, I mean, they went through that as kids, right? And so, man. That car they had, they drove that car for 20 years. At least. You know, they weren't looking to upgrade their house every three years because the market was growing and and that's what you did is you just kept flipping your house. And and so it's where we're at. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we got to just take a step back a little bit and go, wow, how is our society impacted how we're living? Because it impacts us too, right? I mean, again, when we were kids, you had a TV and you had that TV until it died. It, right. it really wasn't like now it's oh, a TV that used to be $2,500 because it was flat screen. It was the newest thing. And you can buy bigger, better, nicer for 500 bucks right. at Costco. You, you know what I'm saying? And back, it's just a different time frame. And so I think sometimes we got to go, and I'm not saying we need to be back there, but I do believe that the mindset of sticking together Mm -hmm. and not always looking for the next best thing to try to make me happy. And even I have to battle that like, Oh, if if I get this, it's going to make me happy. And really I buy it and it's like a day, two days a week. And maybe some of you are longer. Maybe some of you are just sort of like, ah, but it, it, the material stuff doesn't, change who I am Mm -hmm. intrinsically. I mean, I'm at a point in my life at times when I'm just like, I don't care. Like it's a material item. It doesn't do me any good. I like them and I do like buying nice stuff because I want to keep it. But when I look at our marriage, I have to remind myself like, no, this is a long haul. These are our marriage vows till death do us part, you know, as long as life shall last. And that is the struggle I think we face. Right? There's that tension between, gosh, everything else is upgrading mm-hmm. in life. Everything else is getting better and newer and nicer and this and that. And yet here I am in a marriage where maybe it's not. Right. Because my spouse doesn't want to upgrade. My spouse doesn't see an issue. Mm-hmm. And yet I do. And I'm, and I'm changing. And yet my spouse hasn't taken that step with me. And that happens in a lot of marriages. I can't tell you how often that dynamic shows up in coaching, right? Where one spouse is, you know, they're working on that. And part of the challenge that I think we face that that I know no generation ahead of us has faced is the fact that social media makes it so prevalent mm. for or so accessible for us to see. And keep in mind, it is the good parts version. But you know, all of these amazing husbands and wives that are doing these things with their spouses. And so it looks really amazing. Keep in mind, there is a facade quality to all of that because nobody posts, you know, the argument before church and nobody posts the messy, you know, bedroom. That's mine. Like, I'll just tell you, (laughs) messy bedroom, bed, not me. We don't, we don't post those things. Mm Mm-hmm. And so we think everybody else is living this perfect upgraded, like super deluxe, all the bells and whistles marriage. And and so we're like, well, if I could just get what they have, 
if, if I could just live their life, if I could step into their shoes. And we need to start you know, taking a step back and saying, hold on a second, what do I actually need to upgrade here? Because you may not need to upgrade your spouse. You may need to start with you and start thinking about, okay, what happens if I upgrade my attitude towards my spouse? Because mm-hmm. I will tell you, and, and I know this from personal experience, and I know this from you know countless people that I've coached with, that sometimes the attitudes that we give to our spouses create a reality that we're not enjoying, right? If you're mm. constantly angry towards your spouse, let me tell you something, you're going to get a little anger and irritation back. You know, do you need to upgrade your, you know, what would happen if you upgraded your expectations, right? If instead of saying you need to be just like the guy down the street or you need to be like the girl that I see, you know, the, the Pinterest, you know, the princess queen. And we said, wait a minute, who am I married to? Heard this amazing testimony this morning at women's prayer where this woman said, you know, we were talking about marriage and she says, you know, we all have this image of who, who we're going to marry. Right. And she said, the husband that God gave me did not come in the package I expected, but he was the exact person that I needed to weather the storms that we have, we have weathered over the years. Mm. And it was such, they've been married 20 some years. It was such a moment of just that realization that you grow together in this thing called marriage, right? So instead of looking at who are all of these other people that maybe you could upgrade your life with, let's talk about how you upgrade yourself to create that extraordinary marriage. Let's talk about what shifts you can make because let's face it, you can't, like, we're not dealing with phones here. We're not dealing with a two-year contract that says, oh, you know what? New technology. Do-do-do. Turn it in. Yeah. Send it back to Apple. Send it back to Verizon, wherever. We, we have to get we have to get real and say, this is, this is a marathon, not a sprint. This is a covenant, not a contract. Th- this is a long haul. And so how do we do this together? But f- before we go there, let's, let's share about this week's sponsor because it actually all ties in with how you can upgrade. And that's the one marriage conference. They're our sponsor this week. And you know, as we're talking about this idea of upgrades, as we're talking about what can you do, as we're talking about shifting the mindset around attitude and expectations and all of this, this is what the One Marriage Conference mm-hmm. is all about. On top of that, we throw in the community, the one family, and let's face it, we could all use the family that we wanted to have. We could all use more of that because sometimes the families you know that we're raised in or married into, we're like, eh, let's create the family. Let's get into a community with people who are super excited about marriage, who want to see extraordinary marriages happen. Let's have a day filled with laughter and fun and just that sense of, yes, we are dreaming again. We are doing this together. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, there is no better time to get your tickets because you can actually do this as like a two for one for your family, right? You can make it your Christmas gift and your Valentine's Day experience because we are going to be in San Diego in February of 2020. We're going to be in Henderson, North Carolina in March of 2020. So a little East Coast, West Coast action. I'm just saying we're covering all the bases. So get your tickets now. Choose to start 2020 upgrading your marriage. Go to oneliveevents.com. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to, to upgrade your thoughts, your perspective, and your marriage, go to oneliveevents.com. So let me ask you a question. And yes, I do want you to think about it. Don't like, you know, close your eyes, if, especially if you're driving, please don't close your eyes. But what if you, what if you decided to upgrade your attitude and how you're showing up in your marriage? And this really goes back to what our hashtag was for last year is what can I do? Because a lot of times what we've seen is, well, I'll do something when my spouse does this, or I'll make a shift when my spouse does that. And sometimes, and, and we know, Hey, you've been, you've been pressing in and your spouse hasn't moved yet. I, we, we hear those stories and we understand, and we will continue to be praying for breakthrough. Mm-hmm. We will, because that is what we're about. We're about believing that shifts will happen. And sometimes maybe you just need to go, you know what? what can I do in this moment? Mm -hmm. And that's it. 
and 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 go at it. And I know even for Elise and I, when we get into our into our places where I feel, sometimes I want to hold steady, and, and this will happen. Where like Elisa needs to make that change, or Elisa needs to do that, and, and I'll get in this mindset, and I need to remind myself what what attitude am I bringing to the marriage. What attitude am I bringing towards Elisa? And and yes, sometimes it can it can be quick, and sometimes it can take me a couple of days to understand why we're we're, we're a bit tense, why we're standoffish to one another, and somebody has to make a move. And, and sometimes it's Elisa, and sometimes it's myself. And, and this goes back to just asking yourself a few questions. You know, what would happen if I shifted from being hostile and shifted to being helpful? Right. Instead of begrudgingly doing stuff, just said, you know what, this is what we need to do to make our family work. This is what I'm going to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Or, or if you chose to be loving instead of lashing out, your words have power. We could actually repeat that line. Your words have power in every single show and not say it enough. Because the words that you speak, the tone of voice that you speak towards your spouse, the, that, that sense of do they love me or are they just angry at me? is going to create a reaction. So what is the attitude that you've been carrying? And what do you need to shift in your own attitude towards your spouse to create the shift in your marriage? And here's the thing. If you're the reluctant spouse, th- this is always the interesting part too, because I think we we do need to address this and and look at this from a place of, hey, the person who's listening to us right now mm-hmm. is a person who wants a change. And they're probably sitting there going, yeah, Tony and Elisa, I get it. I, I, that's why I'm listening. Like, I want my marriage to be extraordinary. I'm here. I'm, I'm all in. I'm doing that. And yet, it's been years. My and we wife, know that's true. Yeah. My wife isn't moving. She doesn't want to have sex. She, she, she doesn't care. My husband, he, he's just, you know, he's set in his ways. He'll tell me that. And so, with somebody who's listening, and, and I don't know if we can answer it completely, mm-hmm. you know, but for the for the person who's here and they're listening and they're like, yeah, I do want to upgrade my and I am going to upgrade my own attitude and 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 make that decision in that in my own life. What do you say to them in a coaching situation if they're on with you and and the husband or the wife doesn't want to change? Well, the first thing I would say is you can only do what you can do. Right? You can't you can't force someone to change. And you have to choose what the marriage is, what your, what the marriage is going to look like, right? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I I wish I, I tell people this all the time. I'm like, I wish I had you know a magic wand that I could send to every couple that I coach with that they could just you know tap their spouse on the head three times with the magic wand and and it would all be better. Mm. There is no magic wand, but what I do know and what I've seen time and time again, and there's actually um. There are a couple of passages in scripture. The one that I'm thinking about is it's Jeremiah 29. And many people are familiar with Jeremiah 29, 11 that goes, you know, I'm going to paraphrase for, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, give you a hope and a future. The interesting thing is that if you back up and read starting, I think verse four, I'm not going to share the whole thing with you, but it talks about being an exile and about the Israelites being an exile and how even in exile, they were called to grow and multiply and live full lives. And then in Jeremiah 29, 10, so right before that scripture verse that so many people love to quote, it talks about when the 70 years of exile are over. Mm. And I actually shared this at a women's group a while back that says, I don't know how long your exile is. I don't know how long a couple has to work to have their breakthrough. But I do know that when you choose to grow, when you choose to pour in, when you choose to do the things that are right and, and, and healthy, you're doing everything that you can do. And I, and I tell people this all the time. You have to know every day when you get up in the mirror, have I done everything that I can do? Mm-hmm. That's how you keep going. Okay. And, and I just, and I just want to, I wanted us to go there because mm-hmm. I think that really parallels our lives a bit because for Elise and I, in all honesty, it was 11 years in our own marriage where we just felt like we were just moving along. We, we weren't in this place that we are in, are in now. What you see now is 12 years of being willing to go, we're going to invest in ourselves in each other. It wasn't though until after 11 years that we got to this place. And so the one thing I want to say is if you're in this place and, and you're, you're like, Oh, is it ever going to end? Yeah, it will. 
it, it, it truly will. You just got to be in a place in your own mindset. I, I really do believe you may need to write down two or three things. You got to start dreaming again. You know, you got to be able to go, Hey, what, what are we doing together? It might be shifting your spouse's mindset from the day to day. They're only seeing what's happening today and going bigger. You know, and we have our dream card. Mm -hmm. that you guys can pick up. You can go to one extraordinary marriage.com slash dream card. I mean, this is a, a free marriage guide that we have for you guys to begin to go, okay, where are we going? What, what What's our vision for our marriage again? Maybe it, we've lost that. You know, something else that just came to mind, and I often use this in coaching, and I think it's so applicable to that question, is take a look at what your spouse does professionally. And Look at how they develop around that, whether it's, you know, they attend trainings or they go to, you know, continuing education or even, and I know some of you are thinking right now, my spouse doesn't do anything but play video games. Okay. I'm going to address that too, because even the video gamers want to know how to get better at playing the video games. Oh gosh, man. They're, they're like these, right, they're watching the YouTube, YouTube channels. They're yeah. doing all this kind of stuff, <laughs> right? Marriage is no different. So whatever the link is, and I do this all the time with my coaching couples, whatever the link is, your spouse already has a set of skills to, to create the extraordinary, to move themselves forward. Stay at home moms, they're on like 25 different blogs and they're listening, they're going to Mops International and they're doing all of these different things. Why? Because they want to be better. So there's no, there's no profession, there's no lifestyle choice that you can give me that I can't find a way that you already have the skills to make your marriage better. What I'm going to encourage you to do if your spouse is reluctant is to really think this week and go, okay, what do they, what do they do that they are excellent at? What do they do that they want to learn more? What do they do where they keep growing? Mm. And how can I find the parallels to marriage? Because this is just another area of life where you need to keep growing. It's an area of life that can be upgraded. And so like, I'm just in here, I'm like, okay, I'll, cause I, I know that one of the things that, you know, people talked about distractions and things like that in the past weeks was video games. And like, mm -hmm. I, I have the video gamers in my, like in my vision right now. I'm just saying it, it, this can be a very trite message. That's all. That's what I'm saying. It's, it can be a very trite message to somebody who's like, but I've been doing that. Mm -hmm. And yet my spouse doesn't want to move. And that's where I think we have to be able to say, okay, what am I going to do? What have, what, have I, what, have I, what have I been called to do? Mm -hmm. I've been called to love on my spouse. It might mean busting out your, your vows again. It might be time for you guys to, to go, you know what? We're going to renew our vows. It, it, it might be a time that it's like, you know what? We just need some time away. I, I don't know what your specific circumstance is. And yet, I do believe that you guys can you guys can upgrade your marriage. Absolutely. You guys can have the extraordinary in your marriage. It's just going to be a journey that sometimes we don't see right now in front of us. When I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail and I stepped on the the California Mexico border, I didn't see the end in Canada. You know, because we go into Manning Park, British Columbia, two thousand six hundred fifty eight miles. I didn't see the end. I only could see what was in front of my feet. But I knew if I just kept on walking and kept on going, I would reach the end if I didn't quit. That's the key. I couldn't quit. Because mm -hmm. if I quit, then I don't make the end. I don't, I don't get to that point. In marriage, though, we don't have that. Right? There is no end. We're, we're not running. I, I, I always love, and we use it often, marriage is not a sprint. It's a marathon. The thing is, a marathon ends at 26.2 miles. Our marriages don't end till, till death do us part. So we got to be able to weather the storms, no matter where we're at, weather the seasons, know that we can be changing. Mm -hmm. We can, we can determine the atmosphere that we're creating. And sometimes we're creating an amazing atmosphere. Sometimes we got worship music on and it's, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's fantastic. You're in a place, you're in your zone. And then your spouse comes in and is like, turn that stuff off. Or your kids come in and they, they, they just like, I can't believe you're listening to that right now. And there are other times though, when we're in an atmosphere, we were creating that is pulling ourselves down mm -hmm. and our spouse down. And we're, we're all going through that. You guys, 
Elisa and I go through that as well. And, and, and I want you to know that this isn't a message of like, you need to do better. That's, that's not what it's about because we're all on this journey together. We just want you to know that the spouse that you have is the love of your life. There's somebody you said, I do too. And it's not time for an upgrade. It's not. You're going to take your same problems with you to the next relationship, to the next marriage. You know, what have you, what are you doing? Are you all in? Have you done everything you possibly can? Because that's where I really think the extraordinary begins to happen. We think we've done everything. We think we've done it all. And yet there have been times when I've looked at myself and I'm like, no, I haven't. I think I have because I've done all this work, but at the end of the day, we haven't. So as you think about this this week, as you look at your life, your spouse, your marriage, realize that you're, you're on a journey and there is no reason to upgrade to something new. What you have right now in your hands is all that you need. And believe me, hug, hug that person tight, squeeze them tight, kiss them. Because there was a time when you said, I do to them. And can you do it again? And if not, what are you choosing to do right now to get to that point? So the both of you can be to say, I do again, go do your wedding vows this next year, go do a vow renewal. Even if it's just you two and one person, like a pastor, officiant, whatever you want to do, maybe some close family and friends. Go do it. Make that shift in your marriage this week and in this year. We love you guys. Can't wait to hear about how you are going to do your vow renewals, what you're doing to change the atmosphere in your in your marriage, what you're doing to change your own attitude. Love you guys. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you next week. Love you guys.